Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future Technologies, poised to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech Podcast. My guest is Joshua Wisen. Uh, He's the CEO and founder or co-founder of Smilo Baby, S-M-I-L-O baby.com. Josh, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having me on, Richard. Yeah, tell me about uh, Smilo Baby. What's the premise of the company? Yeah, so uh, Smilo is a direct-to-consumer baby and child brand, and we're focused on delivering the most innovative and safe essentials for every stage of childhood. Our current focus is really to become one of the most trusted resources for feeding and soothing products, but ultimately, we're really looking to become the one-stop shop for parents seeking all the best products for their kids. So where did you see the need in the market versus what we have today? You know, we've got tons of baby bottles and strollers and carriers and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Where is the, was the big hole in the market or the lack that you saw? Yeah, so this is an interesting one. I've actually spent most of my career uh, designing medical devices and consumer products for licensing and licensing them to major brands out there. Um, and the inspiration for creating Smiler really came from years of developing category-leading products for other brands. Um, it seemed like the right time for us to stop licensing these products and to really start to create a new brand that could have the best products in each category and deliver them to the parents uh, in a whole new way. Um, the I guess the more more unique part about uh, what we do is our designs are are based in science, um, and we take that approach to create just a, a better product, not just a better looking product for for the consumer. Okay, so, what are some of the uh, products that you've designed? or you're working on that you can talk about and you know, how they differ from what's out there right now? So within Smilo, um, the core products that we, we started with is our palate support pacifier and what we call our fuss-free feeding bottle. Uh, what makes those really unique, um, again, is the science that goes into them. Uh, pacifiers were really pretty much unchanged until we came around and, and, and looked at the problems that were, were being caused by pacifier use. Um, you know, it's a fun little fact here, but the baby's mouth or their palate actually grows about 30% in the first 16 weeks of life. Uh, and so we set out to design a pacifier that supports that palate during the, during and throughout the, those critical times. Um, other pacifiers are sort of generically sized and don't really pay attention to what's going on uh, as the mouth develops. Uh, as a result, we see a lot of patients or, or a lot of uh, people that are using pacifiers um, end up developing malocclusions or crossbites. Uh, our pacifier actually sets out to fix that problem by expanding in the mouth and just being sized more appropriately to the different stages of growth and development. Um, our feeding bottle is, a, is another good example of where we bring science in there and, and combined uh, technology and, and, and science learning into the, uh, the consumer product. Uh, our patented feeding bottle nipple actually provides a flow that reduces the amount of air intake that can cause things like colic or ear infections uh, and other gas ingestion by up to 44% compared to the other leading brands. Um, This is really significant because we don't do it with tons of parts and hard to clean surfaces. Uh, We actually have a patented valve um, and patented uh, nipple tip uh, that, that makes this all possible. Um, so again, just examples of how, how we do the research in the background and bring better products to, to, to um, the consumer. Um, kind of a more so unique... With, um, oh, yeah. Go ahead. We, yeah, before we move on, I had some questions. Mm-hmm. So um, what problems do current pacifiers create with babies? You mentioned uh, some scientific names of issues, but I'm not, it's been a long time, so I'm not sure uh, <laughs> yeah. my kids yeah. are a bit older. <laughs> so what are the it's issues too- that they cause and what do they do? The pacifier the two, meant for bottles too. Yeah, the the two main problems that that um, that are seen from pacifier use is one called a crossbite, so where the top teeth start to cave in over the bottom teeth, uh, and the other problem is called an anterior open bite, where the front teeth of the mouth will start to jut out slightly. Um, now the the interesting thing is that nature has found a way to deal with the anterior open bite when people stop using pacifiers for the most part, their lips will help guide their teeth back into position. Uh, so we were focused on the on the crossbite, uh, which really takes place in the in the rear part of the mouth. Um, and again, what we were seeing is a, a lot of 
pacifiers were undersized uh, and not fitting the mouth properly. And because of that, every time the child would suck on it, they would actually have uh, the, the top of the mouth would actually start to collapse in more and more, causing this crossbite. So we sized our pacifier in, in uh, actually four different stages, newborn one, two, and three, to correspond with different age milestones of the child. And this allows the child's top of their mouth or their palate to be supported uh, throughout that, that critical time when it's growing and developing. All right. So um, are you at the point where you've gotten uh, babies using the new pacifier and you're testing? Do you mean do you have to do clinical trials? So we don't do clinical trials, um, but we do, for, for this particular product, what we looked at was um, using finite element analysis to simulate what goes on in the mouth and, uh, and to study how the pacifier would deform uh, in the mouth when in use. Um, and this is really unique, again, because no other brand is focused on trying to prove out their science and their claims the same way that, that we are. Um, we've also had uh, had a, a, just a lot of success in, in the market with our pacifier. Um, we followed a number of kids for uh, a number of years with um, in, in making sure that, the again, the size was right for them uh, and that their mouth was going to be developing uh, properly. Um, and this, this is uh, through the help of our, our clinical staff that we have on our team. We have a team of pediatric dentists and pediatricians, lactation consultants. Again, depending upon what product we're working on, uh, we access these, these experts to help us design and test out our products. That's great. With the, um, the reduction of airflow in the bottle, mm -hmm. again, is that in use and uh, are you seeing a reduce in the amount of colic? Yeah, this one we tested a couple different ways as well. We went back to uh, finite element analysis again, uh, being able to create that accurate simulation. Uh, and we really look closely at the, the fluid dynamics, right? What's happening as milk transfers from uh, a mom's breast during nursing to the baby versus what's happening in bottle feeding. Uh, and we were able to break down uh, the design of the other nipples and, and really design uh, our nipple, which was the, you know, the way to reduce, uh, to reduce airflow, excuse me, reduce the amount of air intake that the baby was going to have and improve the fluid flow. Um, we call it a mom-like milk duct because, because of this reduced uh, energy that's required and, and is closer to simulating breastfeeding uh, than any other nipple, in our, in our opinion. Uh, and then how does it reduce the okay. amount of air? So you mentioned how it reduces it because of the, the geometries of the valve and, the, you know, and all that, which is great. I just wanted to know if uh, you were at the point where it actually is doing it. Yeah, absolutely. There. Yeah, the best the best way to see this is is through testing and learning, right? And we did this a lot before launching the product, and and now even after launching um, and, and having this product live for for over a year now, uh, we continue to see just fantastic stories and and reviews from our customers uh, that says you know not only is this reducing the amount of colic and and gas that my baby has, but oh my gosh, it's so much easier to clean than than some of the other brands and. You know, we love the quality of product, and, and, and that's always great to hear those success stories. Yeah, it's, I guess I've talked to a lot of medical and health companies. So baby products, do they ever, are they ever classified as medical devices, or for some reason is there an exemption, or do they fall it, into it, a different area of the FDA? It, it depends on the product. Uh, a lot of these things are considered um, class one devices, and some of them, uh, depending upon if you're looking at like uh, breast um, uh, breast pumps and and similar, will will be classified as medical devices. Uh, but a lot of these other products are just classified as consumer products. We take a, a very serious stand when we're designing all of our products be because my background is in developing medical devices. Uh, we look at uh, as if we're creating these consumer products under the medical device um, uh, rules and regulations to try and create the, the safest products using the highest quality materials and, and quality control uh, as possible. Yeah, and I guess you've been in the industry and around ever since the bisphenol A issue came up, I don't know how many years ago, but what's your uh, stance there and what, you know, how has that affected the industry and how does it affect your products? It had a big effect on the industry several years ago. Folks had to switch quickly switch from using um, you know non BPA free materials to BPA free materials, and this definitely um, was a was a wave of change throughout the the industry. Uh, for us, when we were launching Smilo, it was really easy choice. You know, we're, we pick materials again that are always the safest possible materials. We're not worried about pinching pennies and getting a cheaper material. We're, we're worried about delivering the most quality product to our consumers. So 
avoiding BPAs, BPFs, all the BPSs, all the, the nasty uh, chem- chemicals that are out there and under the microscope, uh, we're always free and clear of those. And the same thing is with our silicones that we use. We're always using medical grade uh, products so that, that we're giving the best product to our consumer possible. I like to say, you know, would would we use it on our own kids? And we do use it on our own kids. And would we give it to family and friends? And, and that's really the mindset that we use when we're developing our products. All right. So we talked about the bottle. We talked about the uh, the new pacifier. Any glaring, um, again, holes in the market or areas that need serious addressing that you're working on that maybe haven't gotten there yet or that you are working on? You know, what other products are you are you coming along with? We have a lot of new products in development in in, a, in in and across various categories. One of the more exciting things, we actually just launched a couple of weeks ago uh, what we call the Monarch Pillow. And this is another good example of bringing uh, science and technology to an area that's been pretty stale and and uh, underserved in our opinion. Uh, the Monarch Pillow is, is a three-in-one pillow that is there to solve the needs for mom when she's pregnant when she's nursing, and then afterwards when the babies and infants need to, to do what's called tummy time, which is really exercise for the baby to strengthen their core and neck. And the previous products on the market all seem to just fall short in our opinion. There's plenty of pregnancy pillows that were these huge uh, body pillows and, and weren't particularly comfortable or particularly useful for a lot of people. Uh, and then when they were nursing, there's only two or three real products out there uh, and all of them seem to be kind of funky or, or fall short of what mom really needed. They either um, were too sort of floppy and didn't work for supporting during nursing, or you had to strap yourself into some of these things, uh, which doesn't make sense if you have ever had a newborn. You know, you have to get up and move around. You can't just sit, sit in one place. Um, and so when we developed the Monarch Pillow, we worked with uh, a leading chiropractor, uh, along with our team of physicians and lactation consultants, to really think about what are the needs of, of mom uh, when she's pregnant and what are the needs of mom when she's nursing and, and as they grow? And instead of uh, the consumer having to buy three or four different products to solve these problems, we combined it all into one patented pillow. As for the technology part of it, uh, it's able to um, change into or fold into over 30 different unique shapes. So you can really get a customized fit uh, depending upon your body type and your stage and, and how you like to breastfeed or how you like to sleep. Um, and uh, we created a, a unique pillow of layered memory foam and, and uh, other supporting materials uh, so that it was the most comfortable for, for mom or dad to, to use. Yeah, that's great. Huh. So the pillow you created, it, uh, you know, the mom can fold it or unfold it or change its, uh, its dimensions so that as she gets more and more pregnant, the pillow will support her in the right way? Absolutely, and in different positions. So some people um, use it for sleeping, and they either support their hips by putting it between their uh, between their legs when they sleep, or they may fold it in a particular configuration that helps support their uh, their stomach uh, at later stages. And then even just sitting on the uh, the couch when they're resting, we have different different suggested positions for back support and uh, and or side support depending upon how they want to be sitting. Uh, and that then carries over into nursing because everybody nurses different, everyone's unique in their own way. Uh, and so with the over 30 different unique combinations of uh, or configurations that it can go in, uh, there's bound to be one that's going to fit uh, fit the person well. Huh. Very interesting. Well, cool. So what's, um, what's on the horizon for the next uh, six months or a year? What new products or new initiatives are you working on? Yeah, we're we're focused on continuing to expand into to new categories. So we're going to be doing more unique products that revolve around sort of nursery and nursing. Uh, as well as um, later stage feeding for infants. Um, so we've got a really cool roadmap of, of products that, again, are going to continue to fill out the nursery, um, thinking about uh, feeding and sleep and, and what's needed for these different categories, as well as uh, when I say feeding, we're talking about feeding for older kids. So as they start to transition from you know using their fingers to using utensils and the different products that surround uh, mealtime. Oh, any more specifics on the feeding, or it's not at that stage yet where you can talk about it? Uh, we're still a little uh, in development, and, and we're going to keep that one under wraps for now, but, but they're exciting. Okay. Well, very cool. Oh, where do you see the the industry of baby products going? Are there any big trends that you're you're observing? Uh, I think there's a bigger microscope for uh, that the consumer is looking into uh, to, to examine sort of what are the claims that brands are making and and you know, is this really the best product? I think the the great thing about the internet and the great thing about 
social media and sharing is you can you can get so much information. Um, now, being able to find the good information versus the bad information is is still really important. But um, you know, for us, this is this is great because people can learn about us, discover us online, um, can take the time to learn about the science that we put behind our products. Uh, and I think that theme of creating the the best, safest products for uh, the family it, it is a big one right now and um, can be hard for a lot of incumbent brands to sort of catch, try and catch up to that and recreate their products. But, but for groups like us, um, it's really exciting. Well, very cool. And so what's the best way for um, potential customers or interested parties to reach out to you? Uh, so obviously shopping is 24-7, 365 at smilobaby.com. Um, we also have a blog, mamagoose.com, M-O-M-M-A goose.com. And on that blog, we have various guest posters and, and medical teams that uh, will come in and, and have different posts. It's great, great source of information for pregnant people, for uh, newborns, for folks with older kids as well. We have a lot of different cool guest, uh, guest posters on Mama Goose, and we're always putting out new content. Um, and of course, reaching out via social media all the time. Okay. Well, very good, Josh. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast, and uh, I'm glad you're making these products and it- definitely sounds like it's needed to help kids and parents, you know, get through this time. So thanks Richard. Appreciate the opportunity. You've been listening to almost here around the corner future technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3d printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.